let's start now. Uh, I can I invite all of you to clap your hands. It's really historical. Yeah, uh, it is really the first, very first web conference seminar of the AAOU. Uh, I'm really glad that uh, we are starting it, and uh, we have great speakers today as the very first one. Uh, if it starts well, I believe that we'll go on having very fruitful uh, sharing sessions through this kind of web conference. Uh, when KS and I planned our AOU pla uh, activities for this year, one of the key things we work on has been that uh, we we want really more sharing around uh, among AAOU members. Uh, we hope really to uh, do something that is useful, productive, and fruitful for uh, member institutions. And one of the things that we, we, we believe that will be useful is this kind of uh, sharing web conferences. Uh, it's not just my idea, it's the great idea also comes from Dr. K.S. Yun. Uh, and we are very glad that uh, after some discussions, we decide that we have three other speakers today. I will introduce them one by one. Uh, we are going to start with our start our discussions with open educational resources. Uh, we believe with this this topic. We believe on this because we believe that it is now uh, at this moment in time nowadays. At this point in our history, OER is the key focus. Uh, and for open universities in Asia, no one can afford to ignore it. There's a strong trend, and we see great potentials in it. Uh, while we are talking about open educational resources, I believe that uh, 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 as it is something uh, that most of us know, but there are still a small number of uh, participants who may not be very familiar with it. Uh, open educational resources, we refer to resources for educational purposes. They can be uh, teaching materials, teaching objects, they can be curriculum materials, they can be textbooks, uh, anything that can be useful for educational purposes. They may also be res research data, research materials. Uh, for all institutions, we believe that there, there are a very large number uh, or quantity of education of OER, educational resources that are open, openly accessible uh, in Asia. But the key point is for us, educational professionals, we also hope to see that teachers, education educational practitioners don't have to reinvent the wheel very often. They don't need to reproduce the materials that are already available in other parts of the world or in other institutions. Uh, there should be more sharing and there should be more collaboration in developing material so that we can use our resources in more meaningful way and more economical ways. Uh, so the key point would be sharing and searching. Uh, in such kind of things, uh, there are lots of key issues. I'm very glad we have key speakers uh, in various areas here. Uh, and this takes me to the next slide. We have four presentations today. Uh, the first one will be delivered by Professor Yamada, uh, a prominent professor at the Open University of Japan. Now, he will be talking about the federation of repositories. Now, uh, we believe that as we there are educational resources, we need repositories to keep them, and there are quite a lot in each country or cities. The key point is how to organize them together. Now, uh, Professor Yamada will share his ideas and and the work he has done. He has been involved in. Uh, then the next presentation will come from. Uh, Dr. Mindu. Dr. Mindu has done a lot of great work. He is part of the UNESCO. Uh, now, his topic today is on experience on working with metadata on retinamus, OER repository. Uh, now, 
metadata is one very key point here for all of us in all of the in OER. Uh, for various reasons, uh, it's not realistic to transfer all educational resources we believe to be useful to just one institution or one place. Uh, so what we can do to uh, facilitate sharing and searching is to collect suitable metadata. That is data about the resources, what kind of data it is, uh, what it can be used for, uh, the quantity of it, the level of it. So with such kind of data, we can facilitate searching and for other people to identify them. Uh, so Mingdu has done a lot of great work on this. Uh, I really look forward to it. And then another very good presentation. Uh, you will be impressed by his PowerPoint slides very soon. Uh, is from Mr. Ishan Abawadana. Ishan's topic will be on one very important thing and interesting thing, metadata, how to remove the weakest link. Uh, from the topic, you, you see that he has been involved in metadata work for a long time. Uh, he has done a lot of research in this area. Uh, doing his part, I believe that you should very soon find this out. Uh, he is uh, uh, an associate dean uh, in one of the department in his uh, uh, in one of the departments in the Wawasang Open Universities. Uh, he has been involved in this area for for long and has given written a lot of research paper in this area. Last but not least, definitely not the least. Uh, my colleague, Dr. K.S. Yun, will present his baby. A very important project for Hong Kong. Uh, he is developing open textbooks for Hong Kong. Uh, he will be talking about its development, its idea, and its status. Uh, and most important of all, how, as a kind of OER, it can uh, benefit a city like Hong Kong. Now, I will be serving as a facilitator. Here is our rundown. I finished my introduction, and very soon it will be the presentation by individual speakers. Now, uh, for each of the speakers, will uh, they will be talking for about ten to fifteen minutes. Uh, I let me remind our speakers. I believe that they have great presentation. Uh, they have prepared really very nice PowerPoints. Uh, but I need to remind every one of them that your very maximum time is 15 minutes. Uh, at the end of the 15 minutes, I will remind you and then stop you. I'm sorry for that if I need to do so, but uh, it is important to control the time because I believe that that will also be very useful, fruitful discussion among us and also uh, for uh, you know response to questions from participating members. Uh, I see that uh, many have uh, come in. Uh, and wishing to participate, uh, I welcome uh, everyone who is uh, sitting in front of the camera, uh, participating uh, at this very first, I, what I said, historical web conference for AAOU. Uh, welcome you all. Thank you very much for participating in, in it. Uh, when you have questions during any part of the presentation, you're welcome to type in to the chat box, and I will pass questions to the right speaker or all the speakers uh, for responses. Okay, let me now have the first presentation from Professor Yamada. Now, but before that, let me also go through the house rule very quickly uh, for everyone. The whole conference section will be recorded and it is now being recorded. And the recording will be put on the AOU website, so it will be uh, under a creative. Hey. Oh, okay. So, do I need to repeat anything? Okay. Uh, let me go on. Uh, the house rule is that uh, it, this the whole seminar will be recorded, and we need to follow the guideline. 
and if any participant wish to raise questions, simply type in your test, uh, your questions, and I will pass it to the right speaker. Okay, let's move on to the first presentation by Professor Yamada. Now, over to you, Professor Yamada. Can you uh, briefly tell us more about yourself and then start your presentation? Here is your first PowerPoint. Okay, so we can, okay, so we can uh, leave the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The rest of us may leave the video. Yeah, by pressing the stop button just above the checkbox. Okay, Professor Amada, your turn. Thank you very much. Um, very um, so uh, very kind introduction for me, and also I'm very. Uh, it's a very great pleasure and honor for me to be here and to uh, to be at. And join so, uh, this uh, memorable so event for by AAOU. So I'd like to share our experiences to uh, sharing open educational resources in our country and in our university. So Maybe uh, most of you know. So our um, our um, know our organization, Open the Open University of Japan. And so I will skip so this slide. But anyway, so our Open University of Japan is um, an open university, and also a lifelong learning institutions uh, by the. Uh, the uh, uh, in the definition by Japanese government. And also, uh, we are distance education institutions, originally using so broadcasting and printed materials for delivering the so media, but now moving to online courses. And so we have two, two kinds of contribution to OER so movement. Uh, one is so, um, so joining so J, uh, open course where OCW community. So um, as a member of uh, JOCW, so we still uh, continue to provide our OER to uh, to the public. So at the moment, so um, we provide fourteen courses in uh, video session and eight courses in audio session uh, so to the public. So in addition to such kind of whole courses, we are uh, more than 60 so uh, programs. And so so uh, we, uh, we provide it, uh, we provide as uh, OERs. The another kind of our contribution to JOCW community is so JOCW search. Uh, this is a kind of a cross institutional search systems for uh, Japanese OCW communities. So we collect information from member institutions and to make them into uh, some format of metadata and provide to uh, other organizations. So uh, this, the, the purpose of this, uh, this kind of uh, contributing services is to, to increase uh, such ability for end users uh, 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 that is um, learners and teachers. And so if you uh, so visit uh, JOCW, uh, so web page, so uh, you can find so our JOCW across uh, institutional search uh, uh, window. And um, in addition, so the sharing so um, among Japanese universities, so um, we 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 share our metadata with overseas organizations using a group, a global running object broker exchange initiatives framework. So um, in each country or regions, 
this kind of um, so uh, uh, federated repository, uh, so which uh, collect uh, so the metadata from so uh, many uh, institutions in re in the same region or the same country. So we have uh, we make some connections with such kind of. Um, nationwide, so uh, uh, federated repository, to 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 share uh, metadata so internationally. So um, group using so harvesting so uh, technology. So we make some uh, have the target for the harvesters and to share our all of metadata. With such a uh, group member organization. So, um, so this organization is established in 2004, and but now uh, over 10 organizations join, and one of such uh, members is OER. The another contribution to uh, OER community, you know, um, so is um, JMOOC. Uh, this is a very new so initiative in Japan. So we we also stimulated by North American uh, MOOC movement. We have just launched our uh, uh, our so uh, our uh, MOOC organizations. So um, the organization was launched in last November. And we will start it, uh, the courses from the next April. So uh, maybe uh, you know uh, MOOC. So I will skip um, uh, this um, uh, slide. But anyway, so uh, in Japan, so we uh, many university has now committed with uh, MOOC uh, providers and. Um, so Japanese organization themselves launched our own uh, organization. So, um, so, uh, so I'm very sorry. I skipped um, uh, many slides uh, because I so I failed to send a new set of slides. So I uh, please change it to uh, the third um, third set of. Uh, PowerPoint. So I, I will also skip uh, the details of our MOOC content. But anyway, so um, the, our MOOC platform has um, used um, so ebook as a learner interface. So we have an iBook version and an ePub version, and and run so uh, one of um, uh, uh, learning management system, in our case, Moodle, uh, in back end. So uh, learners can use our access to the content, so using uh, iPad, Android devices, smartphone, and um, laptop or uh, desktop computers. And um, they also, um, this time, so I, I should skip this, um, the things. So we also, in the context of MOOC initiatives, uh, we consider the possibility share uh, the, um, the, the running data, so uh, running blog or something uh, in the future as an open data. But today I will skip this slide. And to realize such kind of sharing, so we need some standard in on metrics and um, analytics and to uh, correcting data. Uh, could you change to the last set of slides? As the IMS Caliper is um, just um, the very new uh, standard by IMS uh, Global Learning Consortium. Uh, maybe in the future, I will show you. So I will skip to this. Old. Right, sorry. Um, 
And so, um, okay, so, um, so one, uh, so, to sharing, so our open educational resources has at least two, uh, two meanings. Uh, it is uh, to increase the quality of such ability. Uh, this is a matter for in the uh, learners. So, uh, so learners can access a uh, high quality OER more, uh, so more rap rapidly and so light content more easily. The another aspect of such kind of content sharing is on so provider or producer side. Uh, for example, so in, in typical MOOC, so um, teachers take care of um, so more than ten five or ten uh, five thousand or ten thousand and more learners. It means so um, we can we should have some uh, so artificial um, some machine support systems, so such as uh, artificial inter intelligence, and to so optimize so each learner's learning processes. So it means so we need some many kind of uh, component. Or, uh, so uh, so we have in under the uh, the limited resources. So maybe we should so share such kind of content in materials or development levels. So another aspect of sharing, in, so we met, uh, we, we meet uh, at the moment in Japan, so such kind of sharing of materials. So I cannot show you the next slide, but anyway, so, um, so we, we are now so considering the new possibility and of the so sharing the content in a more uh, so small granular learning object levels. So um, maybe more I used most of uh, my time, so I I, I will uh, stop my presentations, and and I can I could not show all of our slide, but uh, maybe you can download afterward. So thank you very much for your uh, kind attention. Uh, Professor Yamada, really great. It's uh, really kind of you to have put in great effort to prepare the presentation. Uh, in fact, there are many more slides. Uh, uh, for the limited of, of, of time, we have not been able to uh, go through all of this. Uh, but anyway, uh, with Professor Yamada's uh, permission, we can put the PowerPoint on our website, uh, on the AAOU conference website. Uh, 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 participants may like to access them uh, later or after the, the conference. Okay, let's now move on uh, to the next speaker. Uh, uh, Professor Yamada, you may take a short rest first. Now, uh, after the first presentation, we have learned something from Japan. Uh, we will have the next speaker. Now, uh, we see that there are already questions for Professor Yamada. Your, Professor Yamada, you may take note of the checkbox. There are already three questions there for you. Uh, you may like to respond to them uh, in our Q&A section. Okay? Okay, now... Uh, so we now move on to the second presentation by Dr. Mindu. Uh, uh, Dr. Du will share his ideas, his really his experience on working with metadata on Vietnam OER repositories. Let's now we welcome uh, Professor uh, Dr. Mindu. Uh, will you start, Professor Mindu? You may like to tell us a little bit more about yourself and then st start your ideas about uh, an update of Vietnam's uh, Metadays uh, OER work. Okay? Dr. Du, you may start now. Uh, please press the talk button. You may like to press the talk button at the bottom on the screen. 
yet. Not yet, not yet. We we can't see hear you. Yeah. Now you need to press the lock at the lower left. You may press the lock button. Uh, we we can't hear you yet. Uh, you may like to press the lock button. So okay. That, yeah. Okay. Great. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Great. Yes. Yes. Okay. Sorry about that. Thank you. Okay. I may disappear now. Yes, so I over to you. Okay. So thank you, Daisy, for uh, the introduction. And uh, it's my honor to be here today to share with you what we are doing in Vietnam on uh, OER field. And I am Mingo, uh, Vietnam OER Program Director. And today my slide is focused on two parts. The first, uh, the first part is an update as of this month, uh, February 2014 about what we have been doing with the uh, Vietnam OER program. And the next part is our experiences. Just some, just some thought and just, just sharing what we are doing with uh, Metadata uh, for you who are interested in this field. And the first slide is uh, the whole picture on, uh, on the OER. And um, some of you has, uh, or, or have already known that uh, we launched OER program uh, very early in Vietnam uh, since uh, we, we launched a national program in Vietnam OCW and then we changed to the o, yeah, UNESCO movement named uh, Vietnam OER and uh, from, the, uh, from the time on we, we always keep the uh, three legs of development model uh, they are uh, community development, uh, content development, and technology development. These three parts must be go parallel, go together, and equal important. So when you develop any uh, OER program, or I think any education program, you must focus on three legs of development like this. Because, um, uh, if you have, uh, you have to have, have the, the community, and you must have very good content, and above all, you, you must have a uh, very strong infrastructure. It's based on uh, very good technology. So, uh, so far, we have some uh, outcome. That is, uh, we have now more than 3,000 contributors. Uh, they are model, uh, model authors. And uh, we have more than 200 VOLT members. They are university, institute, NGO, company. And uh, uh, every day, we have around 40,000 unique visitors per day. Uh, via Google Analytics, we, we can see that uh, users go to our website that's why I said engine because you know that uh, uh, last year we had a uh, we had a decision we had a decision to uh, to replace the old system with the next uh, we we removed that we we built up a new system named uh, uh, Hanoi Spring uh, Vietnam OER platform and. And without any uh, um, uh, advertisement or any PR campaign, just uh, just open um, just open the website and and people they search for information, they accidentally go to the website. But we have about we have about forty uh, thousand unique visitors per day. It's a very good number. And for the content development, uh, so far we have. Uh, uh, 20, uh, more than 20,000 uh, modules and, uh, and these modules like a uh, chapter of a book like chapter of, of the books or like chunks of knowledge and these modules can, uh, can string together to uh, uh, be a, a collection collection here means like a Facebook or Postware 
and for uh, technology de uh, development, we have uh, uh, a new open source software platform. We based on the uh, connections procedure and based on the Lego idea. That is, every every single uh, knowledge model can go to, uh, can combine this way or that way to build up a, a, a new knowledge. And the software name has a spring. And this software is now available on GitHub. It is where every, uh, almost uh, the open source uh, project, they put the, the project there and everything is open there. And we also have a community of open source software developers. So you can see uh, the interface of Vietnam OER uh, website is not officially launched yet. But is still available by internet. And let's move to the next slide. Uh, I'm going to uh, show with you about uh, metadata and uh, and firstly, let's go to the term. What is metadata? And and uh, as you know, uh, metadata is data about data. And uh, it's usually categorized in three types. And you can see uh, the first type, uh, it, 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 it describes an information resource uh, for identification. And uh, the second is, is uh, it shows a relationship within and among objects. And the last one is, it has to manage information. So, based on the, the term uh, of metadata, and what we are doing is exactly, we, we, we are using metadata is like it, like it is. And the next slide is our um, uh, Vietnam OER metadata fields. And you can see on the right hand, uh, the screen, when any people uh, want to be an uh, want to be an, an author of our of, of the website, they will create a new model, and after they choose the, the appropriate license, uh, now we 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 set default license is CC BY Creative Common uh, uh, Attribution license, and the uh, the next screen will be uh, will let the people to input metadata. And you can see the, uh, uh, some fill in the red, red color. It's a very, very popular, very normal uh, fill. And for some in the blue color, we use that for, for manage, for, for, um, um, for, for manage only, and, 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 and to describe more about uh, the, the data. For example, uh, uh, some module belongs to art and business, but when uh, when people want to categorize uh, uh, differently, they will use tags uh, to 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 to, uh, to do that. And uh, so you you can see that. Um, uh, for Vietnam OER, metadata is input by, by, by user, but the software system or, um, the software system or the, uh, web admin will, will help, the uh, author to correct the, uh, metadata, uh, for the better use, uh, as follows. Here, after, uh, after, uh, Use the input uh, module of collection metadata, and what we will do with that. And we use uh, metadata, metadata for for uh, system admin. Uh, we optimize for search engine. We uh, use metadata to search uh, website visitors uh, um, better. Like when any people will search. Uh, the information that they need. So, if the term that they search uh, is inside the full text, and 
if I uh, uh, am issue on the matter of our life Jesus. So that's um, uh, that result will be maybe so up um, more than the other. Uh, or uh, when when you read, read uh, or so any topic, so the relevant uh, topics or um, related topics will be display around to, to help people find the, the information that they need. And uh, besides that, the metadata is also used for uh, other OER repository that we share, SIMAP, we share content proper uh, by XML, uh, we share for another uh, repository and also import from another repository. And here, the last slide, what we can offer, and or I, I think it's not offered, but what we can do to, uh, to join you, to join you to to be a, a better uh, OER repository for the, for, for, for the reason. Uh, first of all, um, uh, firstly, uh, the VR OER platform named Hano Spring, and uh, this is an uh, open software, and it's really, uh, it is now ready, but it, it needs to improve more, but it's now very ready for download, for install, and, 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 and you can Anytime you can go to GitHub, I can uh, give you the, the URL of the, uh, the, um, the platform on GitHub, and you can go there and and read the documentation there, describe there, um, and then they, you can download the, the software to use. Anyone can use. Uh, it's easy to install, easy to manage. Um, and second, uh, we will let them can be shared and can be reused within the institution of the country via content export and import function. So, uh, a strong OER federation can be built. And the, and the last one is, uh, our technology team can be volunteer for technical help to build an OER metadata hub. So, institutions, uh, you just need to share the metadata, uh, your metadata structure and submit the sign up to the searchable, uh, to be searchable by the hub. So it's like you submit sign up uh, on, uh, on Google Webmaster or you, you submit your sign up on, on the search engine name thing. So uh, uh, we will discuss uh, more, we will discuss further to make this happen. And, we, uh, and I thank you very much for you, uh, to you for your listen. Okay, uh, you all keep your time extremely well. No, oh, thank you very much. Uh, okay, yeah. It's it's a rather comprehensive, really comprehensive uh, introduction of V O E R. Thank you very much for that. Uh, I've learned much more about it now. Uh, I believe the the participants too. Uh, I we can also see that the check box is very active. Uh, <laughs> people like us can be very uh, good at multitasking so we we work f we do several things to at the same time while listening to Mindu's talk uh, at the same time we are also uh, uh, working on the checkbox now shall we do work uh, uh, ask and answer questions in this way uh, something from the next presentation uh, if you have very simple questions, uh, just you just require a yes or no question or just something very factual, you just require a name, then you can go on with the checkbox. But for questions requiring discussions, we'll leave it till the Q&A time so that we can allow the speakers to interact. Uh, maybe not just one speaker would like to respond to a question, other speakers may like to respond to the same questions too. Uh, so let's uh, so just uh, make sure that uh, we we have a fruitful discussion. Uh, so now let's move on to the next presentation. Uh, now we'll look at 
metadata from a different perspective. Uh, and Mr. Yi Shan Abawa Daniel, uh, who has worked on metadata for a long time, uh, he is a deputy dean and a senior lecturer in IT at the School of Science and Technology of Wawasan Open University. Uh, he has got a lot of experience in this area and has uh, worked with a, l uh, a number of great people in the OER area. So I uh, believe that it's really great that we have him today. Uh, now, over to you, Isan. Let's welcome you. Isan, uh, Isan will, will you uh, will you start? Your PowerPoint is ready. Uh, will you start? Yes. Uh, Your PowerPoint is ready. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Casey Lee, uh, first for inviting me, uh, as well as that kind introduction. Um, also, I would like to congratulate the AAOU for this uh, innovative uh, lecture series, which I think will benefit the region. Uh, quite well. So as Dr. Lee was kind enough to introduce me, I shall move on to my presentation. Now we heard a lot about uh, metadata from Professor Yamada as well as Dr. Mindo. Um, however, uh, all this metadata share a common weak link. Uh, my work is more towards the um, um, negative aspect of metadata or how to remedy or how to fix this weakest link and I will explain to you a little bit about my work and how we have gone about doing this. Before we begin we need to understand that uh, the current OER scenario uh, is based on three types of uh, repositories. One is uh, the content repositories where the content is hosted physically the second one is the portal repositories where uh, the links to particular OER hosted elsewhere are, are, are listed and the third one is a hybrid which is a content and portal repository. Now moving on, uh, the, the current situation, in the current situation we have quite a number of OER repositories all over the world and these are categorized into one of the three repository types I uh, mentioned earlier in my earlier slide. Now the, the issue is how do we uh, find uh, resources or how do we find uh, information or open educational resources from all of these repositories which are scattered across the globe and hosting on different platforms. Now this is when metadata actually comes into play uh, and uh, you know provides the search engines a means of identifying which resources come from where. Uh, since Dr. Mindo went into uh, explaining what metadata are, I won't take much time with this slide. However, I'd like to say metadata are, are just like a label on a uh, food carton or, or a, uh, a bottle of medication. So when you see the bottle of medication, you will have a label on it which actually explains to you uh, the contents. So metadata is basically doing that for uh, web-based materials or educational materials or in this case open educational resources. The metadata explains to search engines or to other machines what exactly uh, is incorporated in that OER. There are a few metadata standards currently being used, uh, especially in the OER arena. The first one or the most popular one I would say is the IEEE uh, Learning Object Metadata or LOM standard. Uh, you can see a uh, screenshot of the LOM standard here which allows you to define various aspects or to explain various aspects of the open educational resource itself. The next standard is the Dublin Core Metadata Initiative or the DCMI. It's similar to the IEEE LOM. Uh, earlier on uh, both IEEE and DCMI had uh, slight issues talking to each other. However, the interoperability has grown uh, through the years and now they are used interoperably and both of them are very capable of explaining uh, in very minute detail what exactly consists uh, a open educational resource. Among the newer 
uh, metadata initiatives uh, launched, the learning resource metadata initiative by the Creative Commons is taking keen interest because uh, it is they are, they are trying to make it a truly global standard where all the OER repositories implement a single standard which is the LRMI and with the backing of the Creative Commons uh, I think you know the LRMI will will eventually be uh, the de facto standard for uh, annotating metadata especially in the OER. Now the OER search engines or search technologies uh, at the moment consists of two types. One is a federated search, uh, which Professor Yamada explained a little bit earlier, and the other one is semantic search. I will go on to explain, um, and here you can see some of the initiatives which, which have come up, uh, specifically looking at uh, open educational resources in uh, utilizing these two search technologies. Now, Federated search, as Prof. Yamada said, is basically uh, getting the metadata from uh, the resources and compiling them and finally uh, making them available to the user as a searchable index through a federation. So the Globe Federation is a very good example and uh, it, it has been uh, you know in operation for quite some time now and if you have the time do go into the Globe website and you will be surprised at what kind of information you can find there. The next methodology is semantic search. Semantic search is basically building ontologies uh, for particular domains. For example, in this case I have taken apples and for apples you build a, uh, a um, list of tags or a list, list of uh, terms which explains apples and the interconnections that apples have with other uh, fruits or vegetables. Um, now the problem with a semantic search is the number of domains available in the OER arena. If the semantic search is to be used, then for each domain such as mathematics, English, history, a ontology has to be created. And that means for each domain, a, a set of words, uh, let's say around 40,000 words explaining that particular domain and uh, uh, explaining the interactions and the interconnectivities between the domains have to be developed. Now, with the constant expansion of OER as well as the domains, the, this becomes quite impossible. So it's, it's really easy to do it for one, not easy, it's, uh, it's rather simple to do it for one, but when you consider all the domains available, it becomes a, a daunting task. Right. Now, you, I've spoken about the metadata standards as well as some of the search technologies. However, I didn't speak about the fundamental problem each of these technologies uh, and methodologies share. Uh, Dr. Mindo in his previous presentation showed you a screenshot where the user defines or user annotates metadata for a particular resource. For example, the title, the description, the license type uh, and things like that. So ultimately, the, the search engines will be using that metadata which was defined by the user to find the resource. So the accuracy of a search engine locating the resource you want becomes a function of the ability of the person who annotated the metadata. So if the person who annotated the metadata can't properly annotate it, then uh, the search will be less effective. For example, let's say on uh, Dr. Mindo's uh, VOER portal, you create a good piece of material on history, on American history, let's say. And then when you annotate it, you, you call it uh, uh, operating systems or computer science. So when the search engines come in and look for uh, pieces of material on American history, they are actually looking at the metadata which explain or which consist of the words American history or you know something related but in this particular case the metadata was defined as computer science or operating systems so although the piece of material is a very good piece of material the user will not be able to find it right uh, because the search engine doesn't know that this piece of material is actually on uh, on American history 
Now this this uh, graphic you have in front of you actually shows how uh, I, I call it de-evolution. You know, uh, anyway, ultimately the accuracy of whatever search we do is dependent on the user or the or the person annotating the resource with the metadata. So that's the weakest link in the whole metadata scenario. And my work is mainly trying to figure out a way to eliminate the weakest link from the metadata scenario. I will talk a little bit ab about my work and how we have gone about doing it. Um, in 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 this case, uh, our approach was to get rid of metadata altogether. So um, we have uh, well, I have come up with a uh, methodology which ignores metadata and looks at the actual content of the uh, resource and uh, suggests that to the user. It's it's quite a bit technical, so I. I will try to explain it uh, in a in a simple manner. Um, the the system that we have developed or the platform that we have developed is called OER Scout. It's a text mining algorithm. Basically, it uh, it mines text from the open educational resources. So what it does is it goes into a particular resource, it reads it, it learns what it is about, and it recommends it. For example. Uh, let's say the scout system goes in and reads a piece of material on mathematics. So the first time it reads it, this is without metadata, it will actually go and read the content of the resource and the first time it reads it, it will say, okay, this piece of content is on mathematics. The second time it reads it, it will say, yes, this is on mathematics, but it's con it is concentrating on uh, 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 calculus. And the third time it reads it, it'll say, okay, it's calculus, but it's more on differentiation. So uh, when the user is uh, querying for a piece of material on mathematics, which looks at calculus and, uh, and focusing on, cal uh, on differentiation, the system will go in and bring this piece of material to that user. Now, the, the system actually ignores the metadata, whatever metadata the user has defined. So we have been able to take the weakest link out of the equation. Um, if you take uh, the OER Scout system as a child, um, I'm going to use the analogy of a child. Uh, let's say this child is basically equipped with uh, the, uh, the rules of grammar uh, and uh, has been put into a library. So the, the, the child uses his knowledge of grammar to read the books in various domains and to gather uh, you know, some understanding or some knowledge about whatever domains the, the child reads. Now, when the child reads more and more books, uh, the child actually gains a larger vocabulary or it, it, uh, the child understands a, uh, various domains, more domains. Uh, in the academic arena. So the system works I in a similar way. The more it reads, the more it understands uh, the various domains available. Um, if you remember, I spoke about semantic search previously. And in semantic search, I said you have to create an ontology for each domain. Uh, this has to be done by a human expert. However, in this case, the OER Scout system is able to go in and read on its own and build its own ontologies for the various domains. So it doesn't matter how many domains you have, the system will go and read about the new domains and build the ontologies on its own. Once the, uh, once the child has read uh, and understood uh, or gathered a lot of uh, knowledge on the various domains, uh, he can organize it into a, a, a dictionary or, or, a, or a searchable uh, organized um, uh, list. So um, in this case, I have used the uh, a dictionary as a as a analogy. Uh, the system identifies and clusters the information into uh, various categories so that it's easier to uh, retrieve. I'm going into the uh, next slide. Right. So once the once the dictionary is formed, it can actually uh, annotate the various resources using the various terms it has identified. So, for example, let's say it 
it looks at a open educational resource uh, on um, biology and it has already indexed or it has already categorized biology in the dictionary so it can use that term to uh, autonomously annotate the word biology to that particular resource so it, it has eliminated the human input and it's going on a automated uh, basis uh, annotating the uh, information on the fly. Uh, sorry, Isan, can I remind you that? Uh, a sorry, Isan, can I remind you that uh, your time is about. Uh, <laughs> about uh, you have you almost used uh, up all your time. This is the system we have developed implementing uh, the technology. This is a prototype uh, interface. It uses a technology called faceted search, uh, which allows you to drill into um, the search results much easily. I think I'm running out of time. Uh, this also you can try out. Uh, you can also read about it online and how it works. Um, for uh, To give you a quick example, let's say you are looking at a uh, let's say you're looking at some information on chemistry and then uh, when you type in chemistry over here uh, when you type in chemistry over here it will actually bring you a list of uh, suggested res uh, suggested uh, uh, terms so it doesn't bring you a whole list of uh, information like Google what it does is it brings you a list of suggested terms that means it tells you that okay in in the domain of chemistry I have read so many books and out of those books these are the terms I know and these are the domains I know which domain are you looking at and once you have clicked on the domain you want it will give you a set of related terms as well the related terms are a drill down of the suggested term uh, so let's say for example if you're looking at uh, uh, um, organic chemistry it will give you a, a set of related terms in organic chemistry which you can uh, easily drill down into and once you you pick the information you want uh, you will be able to uh, uh, get the search results I have just one more slide I think yeah, yeah. right okay. so uh, this is the most important slide uh, ultimately, the aim of OER Scout is to learn as much as possible by trawling the, the various repositories available. And uh, at the end, uh, the, the end result will be this little boy growing up into a, a very old professor who uh, has a lot of knowledge in a lot of areas and who can help all of us uh, by recommending various uh, resources so that we can go on with our teaching and learning. I think that's my last slide um, and I can explain a little bit more during the discussion. Okay, great. Uh, Dr. Casey. Yeah, yeah, f a very comprehensive introduction of your uh, Uyao Scouts and also uh, what you have done in this area. Very interesting. Thank you very much, Isan. Uh, let's now move on. Uh, to the next speech, uh, you, you see that uh, the checkbox is is still very active, and there are questions and answers. Uh, so uh, I hope that the the questions for discussion will be left till the uh, for the Q and A section, and we'll use the checkbox for just very simple factual answers. Okay. Anyway, let's now move on to the fourth presentation by Dr. K. S. Yun, who is the director of the our uh, of the Education Technology and Publishing Unit of the Open University of Hong Kong. Uh, he's going to talk about an important project for Hong Kong that is uh, the development of an um, open textbooks. Uh, he'll be talking about the project itself and also its future. Uh, now over to you, K. S. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Lee. Uh, good afternoon, uh, uh, everyone. Good day. Um, I am actually quite impressed by the talks of the uh, three speakers about uh, their work on OER, uh, a general framework for um, um, for, for uh, getting the metadata uh, repository, searching through the metadata, and so forth. Um, my presentation is a more focused project on OER, and I hope um, this too can be of some use to 
um, those of you who are working with uh, open learning resources and so forth. This is about an open textbooks project. It's basically uh, and firstly for Hong Kong, but um, actually it can be used by the anybody uh, in Asia around the world uh, because this is open source material. And uh, I will describe the project and uh, starting from the very beginning and see how th the project comes to fru uh, fruition. Actually, the project's not finished yet, um, but we'll be pleased to show you the progress. So this is the uh, project. Um, I first started off with uh, problems we have and seeking solutions through this OER. In Hong Kong, there's a problem with uh, textbooks for some years, like 10 years or even 20 years. The problem is all about prices of the textbook. People say, well, especially primary and secondary textbooks, they are saying parents, teachers, and so forth are saying, especially parents, are saying the textbook prices are too high. Now, the reasons, one of the reasons for being high prices of such textbooks is that the textbooks comes with a range of supplementary materials. The materials uh, include uh, worksheets, quizzes, multimedia contents, and so forth. Some are provided to students, uh, but mostly to teachers. But the effect is that um, the students or the parents are paying for the textbook and uh, they're sort of paying things that are not uh, what they have received. Another thing is that um, Hong Kong's moving towards uh, e-learning and uh, in Hong Kong when students buy the um, printed textbook uh, the e-version of the textbook is not provided as well so students cannot have both versions although the uh, materials are there. Um, Teachers in Hong Kong are also uh, doing school-based uh, tailoring of, in, uh, of instructional materials. But the printed textbooks or the e-textbooks provided by publishers are not for teachers to change. Students cannot make any changes to the existing textbooks. So um, uh, the efforts of teachers, I mean, they, they cannot be used. Uh, some teachers use their own efforts and provide their own resources, but um, they cannot share among themselves very easily because there's no such a system for them to do so. Um, there are also cases like we have a program called Yijin Program, which is actually a, a, a diploma certificate kind of program uh, at the same level as um, the secondary school uh, graduates. Um, and, and this program, for this program, we have developed, actually the Open University of Hong Kong helped develop the materials. The materials are funded by, development of the materials are funded by the government, but such materials are not shared. Uh, I mean, they, they have the materials for individual institutions, but they are not shared, and they, uh, they, they just are left with individual institutions. Similar problems with secondary textbooks. Um, they have materials and they cannot be shared because they are not shared. Right. Likewise, not just primary and secondary textbooks. Likewise, at the tertiary level, um, for example, we are the Open University, we run distance learning courses, but we are uh, more and more finding licensing the copyrighted content becoming more and more costly the price of uh, licensing uh, copyrighted materials started off with uh, in Hong Kong, in the case of Hong Kong, 35 cents for one page. All the way going up to 65 cents for one page now over the period of say 10 years. We believe this is too high, the increase is too big. Um, so people talk about using materials which do not have copyright or which uh, copyrights are given out uh, before you ask and this can help um, saving costs. So this is what we think. 
Even for traditional face-to-face -face courses, we find that as a trend, students these days are inclined to uh, not uh, less inclined to buy those recommended textbooks. So I don't know. They search here and there for uh, learning materials, but. Uh, 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 is that they? It would be good if they have some recommended t textbooks they can refer to, which can uh, have a lower cost. Now, all these we believe can be solved by making reference to some existing open source textbooks, and this can be a general solution to all the problems. And um, this is the basis for working on an open textbooks project and um, well one of the famous licenses we can use is this creative common licenses so um, I, I do not need to say but here I list it anyway uh, these are some of the benefits that we can really uh, uh, harvest through the use of uh, either tailor-made uh, purposely developed textbooks or textbooks which are already available over the internet all right they are less expensive and if you uh, want to use the printed textbook they are always the e versions are uh, over there and teachers and students can always use all or part of the textbooks they can reuse remix and redistribute the parts of the textbooks that are relevant to them and uh, these textbooks, these contents can be modified to meet individuals, schools or courses needs. Alright, so um, that's the basis and uh, in the year 2012 we started off cons conceiving uh, a planning for such a project and we get funding at the end of the year um, and uh, the funding allows us to do four things the first is, the, is an open textbooks platform whereby we put all the, this is actually a repository of all the textbooks that's been developed and uh, solicited. Actually some textbooks we can get just obtain from uh, over the internet. But a platform will be developed and this platform is not just a repository but a uh, system whereby um, teachers, instructors can make modifications to existing textbooks and uh, have their own version. Uh, well, later I will describe that such a system we can conveniently use the um, wiki books system but we just found the system a bit too simplistic for our purpose so we thought of uh, building our own um, a system whereby a better editorial and editing sys uh, facility will be added and so on. Now another component of the project is uh, some online textbooks which are not in existence so we need to uh, spend some resources to actually write, actually develop those textbooks and by those textbooks I mean the textbooks at the primary and secondary school level and we are specifically developing a set of textbooks just for the English language. Now the third component of the project is a quality assurance system. A lot of people say if things are cheap, if things are free, then they are no good. We want to say this is not the case. We want to build a quality assurance system to make sure that all the things that we put on uh, this system, this platform, will be good quality and we need to spend resources in ensuring the quality. So that will mean uh, we need to have reviewers for the materials we are developing. Uh, for anything that we source from the internet, we need to build some reviewing system so that uh, we can have peer review people using the resources can provide um, their comments and their rating on the resource. The fourth thing, now having something over the internet will not make it work. We need to have a group of like-minded people working on similar things and so we need to build a community of um, open resources users 
and uh, there should be capacity building opportunities like seminar workshops um, for example webinars of this kind uh, that we are doing so that we can share experience we can sort of um, 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 check with the latest development and so forth so basically these are the four components now Hong Kong there is a organization or called Education City and uh, we are working with it uh, so that uh, we, 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 we share our uh, experience and work now the project itself started uh, has been started uh, already uh, a year ago 1st of January 2013 we have writers, instructors, they're writing the textbooks at the primary and secondary level for the, the, the tertiary level textbooks we have already we have also uh, sourced and identified uh, some of such textbooks uh, the plan is to have at least 100 textbooks uh, at, at the uh, university level available for use now such textbooks we we went to universities and uh, tertiary institutions and seek the mo most popular subjects and uh, 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 discipline areas and these uh, textbooks are readily usable um, so the development, the writing work is progressing roughly according to schedule there is problem uh, in, in, in the uh, primary and secondary textbook writing because for such textbooks we have to um, do it uh, ad adhering to the education department's uh, guidelines and rules and regulations um, our projects plan to complete in September 2015 one and a half years uh, from now and um, for the primary and secondary textbooks they will be tried out in the September 2012 semester um, these are the English language textbooks there are 12 of them they will be ready for use by the completion of the project which is September 2015 uh, we have a website uh, already and um, anyone who, who are s uh, sort of here in Hong Kong or who are not in Hong Kong can go and take a look and uh, you may find some news out of it I can, uh, I can go to the website and uh, can I go to the website? can that be shown? not really otherwise I can go to the website or you can just check and go to the website and take a look at the various components I don't think we can uh, show the website can we? Dominic is helping me to help go to the website yeah p uh, perhaps we have just a, a very very quick look at it uh, uh, time uh, Dr. Yu, your, your, that, that the, is your time uh, is almost up okay okay so, so probably we can just allow a very quick look at the one, uh, website one more minute yes thank you oh. okay so yep so this is the website and um, well you are welcome to uh, go and take a look at the various components uh, right this is just something that we are still doing uh, one of the more uh, interesting projects arising from uh, open educational resources uh, thank you okay great thank you very much Dr. Yun uh, for a, a very good introduction of your project open textbooks for Hong Kong uh, it is an OER project and it focuses specifically on textbooks uh, for open access and you will operate for a common a creative commons license uh, it is brand new in Hong Kong uh, a very ambitious project uh, we can also say not only your project is ambitious we see that uh, other ones uh, uh, the other three speakers as present are also ambitious uh, now we have questions already popping in uh, we see that now it is now Q&A time uh, we welcome questions from uh, partic all participants 
uh, and our speakers may now all come in again. Please press your video button so that uh, we can see you all. Yes, welcome back. Okay. Yeah, back. yeah. Yes. We'd like to see you. Yeah. Uh, would you like to respond to any of the questions already wasted verbally? You may like to refer to the checkbox. A uh, number of questions have been raised. Well, I, I think I'll, 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 I'll go first. Um, Dr. Sharma asked me whether it can, uh, the OER scout system can work for uh, resources other than text, uh, such as uh, audio and video. Uh, at the moment, uh, it only looks at uh, textual material. Uh, however, when it comes to audio and video, uh, it looks at the descriptions given um, uh, under those uh, clips or uh, audio materials and indexes them accordingly. Uh, it, it's, it's written in such a way that uh, at a later point, uh, someone who can extract information from videos or audio can feed it into the system and the system will uh, index it. And uh, there's another question on whether uh, OER Scout is downloadable from oerscout.org. Well, um, we are currently, the, the screenshot I showed you is a standalone prototype. Uh, we are currently uh, in the development of a public interface. We have gotten a grant for it. And uh, myself and my research team are currently working on a public interface which will be available through oerscout.org. Uh, so you will have to wait for that. Uh, I think those are the two questions which were directed to me. I will uh, forward it on to uh, someone else now. Okay, there are other questions. So thank you very much, Isan. There are other questions as well. Uh, would any of the speakers would like to respond to any of the questions for you by using your own voice? Uh, Dr. Yun, there has just been one question for you oh, about okay. uh, the offering tools. Okay. Um, the okay authoring tools for use for developing the textbooks. Okay, it's not um, sort of authoring tools per se, but a um, kind of editing system in this case, uh, whereby we allow uh, designers and so forth to put in the content. Um, it's a content management system we are using and uh, I think my colleague um, Dominic can let you know it a lot more but this is, uh, uh, we are using uh, Drupal which is a um, open source uh, language and uh, so it's the Drupal system we are working on. Um, I understand if you want to make a simple um, um, editing system. Um, the wiki books uh, provides a um, good tool and um, actually our colleague friends uh, at wiki books can help you install such a system if that is what you needed. Yes. Okay, may I also ask if uh, Dr. Mindu and Professor Yamada has any to respond to you, uh, whether you, you'd like to respond to any of the questions ra raised for you. Uh, I hope that uh, after you respond to individual questions, so we, we still have enough time for our, the next part of the Q&A section. I'd like to uh, spare enough time for discussing the future of our collaboration among institutions. Uh, now we see that it there has been a lot of uh, in the individual institutions work or individual organizations work. I hope that uh, uh, after your response to individual questions we can still devote some time on uh, collaborative projects and our way forward. Uh, Professor Amada and Mindu, do you have anything to add? Can in I, response uh, to uh, Dr. Lee, can I uh, um, yes. uh, make a suggestion? Yeah. It seems that 
MOOCs, M-O-O-C, is an area which a lot of us, are, a lot of the university, open universities in the Asian uh, region, are sort of interested in. Do you think it's uh, a good idea to sort of uh, ask the o AOU to consider setting up a consortium or a mechanism whereby individual universities can offer MOOC courses over uh, the platform. I can see uh, Professor Yamada offering their courses and uh, they have slightly different ways of doing things. They have downloadable mobile learning materials. Uh, they must have a system set up to provide such uh, um, sort of uh, resources for the learners. It seems to be a better model than the US model, like uh, just having a web-based and HTML-based uh, way of presentation. Uh, seems that uh, in uh, JOU's situation, they, they've moved ahead uh, to mobile learning. So is, is, that, is there sufficient interest from some of us to engage in something like that? I mean, if we have a, such a setup, then each of us can contribute one of two such courses, and uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm over it. Uh, it you you really raised a very important point. Uh, now, in the last five years, there has been uh, snowballing discussions about OER, but starting from about two or three years ago, the development trend appears to be slightly different. Uh, most of the discussions on OER seem to have shifted towards one particular type of uh, OER, that is MOOC, where you have just mentioned. Uh, I believe that it is a very important area and it's very important to o open universities in Asia. Uh, but the, the topic is so important that I believe that we, we need a separate section to cover it. To the, to, uh, we need to devote enough time to it to discuss the the development of it and now our way forward for it. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, for this very beginning section, we just will look at OER in uh, in its broader perspective, uh, and we have been exploring. In fact, uh, quite a number of institutions, including the AAOU Executive Committee, has been discussing for some years about the possibility of developing some collaborative projects. Uh, the uh, the executive committee really wish to have some projects on it, and we we know that uh, our guru in this area, uh, Raj, has done really uh, has initiated some very useful ideas uh, in this area, and we'd like to follow it up. Uh, so I'm just wondering whether speakers here or other participants would like to uh, suggest anything about. Uh, how we can go about it, uh, what we can do to bring us forward so that we can really achieve something or do something uh, in this area. Okay, uh, okay. <coughs> uh, can I speak? Yes, uh, so yes, uh, sure. Uh, Dr. Keshi, so um, MOOC is a very important, uh, one of the important issues for us also. So um, in Europe, so many open university has commitment with MOOC, so future run or opening up ed. So maybe we we also have a very similar uh, situation and so potential so needs we have. So um, so in our case, so um, so maybe. So in JMOOC, so we have uh, at the moment three kinds of platform we have. Uh, so originally, so we we plan to uh, make uh, only one platform like Coursera or edX. Uh, but um, so opening of our organizations, so uh, many Japanese organizations have already had our their own platforms for uh, distance education. So at the moment we have a three or four platforms. 
So in this meaning, so uh, J MOOC uh, contains the meaning of joint MOOC. So we should be sharing some a kind of API or some kind of tools in addition to content to realize so a uh, high quality uh, MOOC platform. So in this point uh, also, so we we can have uh, so we can, we we have a discussion to share uh, other kind of uh, resources among Asian Open University also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. How about Mindu Yishan, Kesh? Do you have any mm. Can any I suggestion? Um, use this opportunity to answer a question uh, from uh, Ramesh Sharma? Uh, he asked the question of um, factors uh, hindering the development of open textbooks, actually open educational resources uh, development in Hong Kong, and I guess in other parts of Asia you might have similar encounter similar situation in Hong Kong very um, simple simply uh, in Hong Kong I think the awareness of open licenses in educational resources this awareness is is not wide so people just don't understand what does it mean and second is of course uh, many people are not willing still not willing to contribute their resources um, to other people and there needs to be a lot of understanding and convincing work and of course I understand we do not need everybody to be very very altruistic uh, very um, um, uh, generous about sharing we need just some people who who are generous then we can have something started um, and of course on the receiving end um, it's also not very common for people to um, use existing materials adapting those open source uh, existing materials on their own teaching so it's a range of all sorts of things which contributes to the um, rather um, uh, inactive development. Open textbooks is a better uh, subject for our work because it is not just some fringe reference materials. It's the core materials. When you want to teach in a classroom, you use a textbook. That is something which confront a teacher directly and they have to consider whether they use an open textbook or an existing commercial textbook so that's why we work on such a project and we are receiving <coughs> more and more attentions these days uh, so that's our experience uh, Ramesh okay thank you very much uh, Dr. Yun for your response uh, a very comprehensive answer uh, uh, we can see that Isan has raised his hand <laughs> for a long time Isan, your turn Uh, Ishan, please press Thank the you. I, I'd like speak to, uh, button. Pick up from where Prof Yamada stopped. Uh, Ishan, please press the speak button. Can you hear me now? Yes. I'd like yes. to I'd like to pick up from where Professor Yamada stopped, uh, saying that uh, when it comes to MOOCs, it's not just sharing content, but it's sharing technology as well. Uh, he mentioned APIs. Uh, and things like that, uh, you know, common platform for the AOU perhaps, uh, which uh, other universities can ride on. Uh, but from a technical perspective, I need to um, I need to express my reservations as well. You know, many of us joining this uh, this webinar today would have experienced uh, low bandwidth. Uh, and difficulties in downloading and you know listening to live uh, uh, you know interaction so this will be even worse when you take uh, you know some parts of the AOU you know such as Bangladesh you know even some parts of India you know Sri Lanka Maldives you know th uh, places like that 
So um, we have to think out of the box, uh, not the Coursera or edX model per se, uh, which will not suit uh, the needs of the Asian continent. Uh, we will need to think of a way uh, to to uh, delink the MOOC from the server and allow uh, participants to follow the MOOC on an offline basis and then come back and join the MOOC to provide an update. So it's, it's an asynchronous uh, mode of learning and teaching uh, that we need to follow. If we are to follow the uh, high bandwidth uh, US model, then I don't think it will be that successful uh, in the Asian region. So that's something I wanted to put forward uh, from a technical perspective. Maybe Mindo will have some more experience in this area to share with us. Yeah, how about you, Mindo? Yeah, Mindo, you may switch on the microphone. OK, can you hear me now? Yeah, yes. Okay, uh, I just want to uh, say that I, I agree with Isan. Yeah, and uh, for, for uh, and also with uh, Yamada, Yamada. And uh, like uh, Dr. Teas, um, uh, what he's doing in, in Hong Kong with open textbook in in the land, we're also doing the same, same thing. But uh, for the raising of the initial uh, book, uh, we are also. Uh, we are also going to uh, meet the uh, people. Uh, uh, we also want to meet the uh, um, people's need. That is, um, first of all, uh, the repository of open textbook is uh, available, and then we will provide uh, some tools like a uh, um, the environment of uh, classroom or we. Uh, so that we can export uh, appropriate uh, textbook or um, or courses to um, for uh, faculty member and student to teach and to learn, uh, um, and uh, and also some um, uh, online testing environment. Uh, and I agree with this and that just uh, just need to have the people to uh, approach book. Uh, a courseware and uh, uh, so that's some uh, idea and, uh, and 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 what we are going to do uh, the next step for for the OER. Yeah, okay. Any other suggestions? Any other ideas? Professor Yamada, do you have any ideas to put forward? Yes, so um, I recommend to have a uh, so next next so webinar session on these things. So uh, maybe we we have many things to discuss uh, at the moment. So uh, so um, so it, so uh, MOOC is a very important point, and e textbook is uh, we we also e textbook is a very good. Um, interface for such um, learners in uh, internet so isolated area or some in our case so older generation people also so combination uh, tablet textbook uh, is much better for uh, much better learning interface so comparing with an original so LMS uh, type uh, interface. So, uh, so, so I agree with your so suggestion also. As it is about time, uh, we have already gone past half uh, past four Hong Kong time. Uh, uh, I think we now, as I I said, uh, we have a lot of important ideas to cover or important topics uh, that uh, we, we should share uh, in Asia. MOOC is one of the very important ones, uh, as, and I certainly agree with uh, Ishan that uh, we need to have uh, 
something really for Asia. We have our uniqueness, uh, our unique culture, our unique uh, practices. Uh, so we and and we need more collaboration. Uh, now, so MOOC will be one of the areas, and OER collaboration, following up uh, what. Uh, Quite a number of institutions have already done. We see that, say for example, Wawasan Open University has already initiated something. Uh, we also hope that in future somehow this uh, initiative can be followed up. Uh, uh, what has what the good work has started will be uh, will be sustainable and and will follow them up. Uh, now, but uh, we we already see that uh, we have great people here we also have a uh, lot of very useful ideas to further develop so I, I see a high possibility for us to go on and we also see the value of this kind of web conference uh, and most important of all we it's important for us to have uh, great speakers like what we have today and also uh, uh, enthusiastic participants we I'm very glad to see the the points coming in uh, 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 I so now so what what I plan to do is uh, as uh, one working for AOU now uh, I will try to organize another one in about two months time so we uh, within about two months time we'll organize another web seminar uh, or mo a modern term webinar for us to share ideas uh, that will follow up what we have discussed today and we hope to see you all again. Yeah, before before we conclude, uh, are there any points, any ideas that you you think you believe that you must share, you must uh, voice uh, before we close this section? Are there ideas that you you certainly wish to raise? Okay, then uh, I'd like to flank uh, wholeheartedly. Our four speakers today, they have done a great job, very good preparation for this section. Uh, following up this section, I will put their PowerPoints on our website so that uh, if you wish, you may download them. Uh, the, this whole section uh, is already recorded and you can also uh, watch it again uh, at our website. Uh, so I hope to see you all again, especially the, uh, our participants. Uh, thank you very much for your participation. Let's conclude here. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you and cheers, thank everybody. You. Okay, bye-bye.